Hey, it's Overland Q&A time and I'm going to take one question today because it's quite a lengthy question or quite a lengthy answer to it. So this is from Envy and Lust, right? Thanks for following us guys. Thanks for watching the show. Um, Envy and Lust says over here, great series of reviews. Now this is with regards to our fridge test that we did. We took four of the best known brands available here in the United Arab Emirates and we took those 40 liters uh, fridges and tested them to the hilt, right? So if you haven't watched that, go and check the series. It's the Engel versus Waco versus ARB versus Snowmaster. And you can conclude your own results from that. The results are there. It's our opinions, um, but the black and white is there available for you. Patreon members, remember you have received yours already or it's downloadable for you guys. Okay, so the question is, I have a 90 amp hour battery and can run parallel five times 100 watt solar panels. What do you recommend for four people or, or four people for five days in a Eurovan? Awesome. So you must be traveling in Europe. If I'm going to say Eurovan, most people don't travel in Eurovans down here because everything's pretty much four wheel drive off road in the dunes. So my assumption is that you're in the in Europe or somewhere in that area over there. I hope my assumption is correct. 500 watt solo with a 90 amp hour battery, four people in the vehicle, I tell you what, you've got ample. That's if the sun shines, obviously. Now, you haven't told me what, what you're running, so I'm going to go with an assumption that you're probably running one uh, fridge, and you're probably going to be running an inverter to charge the laptops and cameras and all the, that stuff. So, a fridge will take about 3 amp hour, right? So I'm going to ramp it up. It's a little bit less depending on the fridge, but about 3 amp hour. So if you're taking 3 amp hour for 24 hour period and you've got a 90 amp hour battery, you're pretty safe. Now, I think you said you've got a lithium nickel metal cadmium battery, which again, the usage of that battery is quite, quite good. Uh, lithium ion battery, you're obviously getting close to 90%. Whereas if you take your gel batteries, whatever it says, if it's a 100 amp hour battery, you're only getting 50 amp hour out of it. So be mindful of the batteries that you guys are installing for the amount of power that you're going to be drawing. So if you're going to be taking 3 amp hour and you've got 500 watt solar, you're going to be pumping in probably about, I would say depending on the solar panel again, but let's take an average of about 5 amp per solar, maybe a little less. Let's bring it down to 4 amp per solar and times 5. You're going to be pushing in more amps than you're drawing out of that vehicle, even if your inverter is running all the time. Going into summer right now, in the Northern Hemisphere, you're probably going to be getting sun to a, the late 7.30s, 8.30s, 9 o'clock at night, which means if your solar panels are out, you've got a shorter night period where it's going to be running your battery flat on that fridge or the inverter for that matter. So, as far as I'm concerned, you have got ample power. If you can run all 500 watts in the sun or even in the shade, you're probably going to have enough. So, good setup, mate. Right, I need to add one more thing over here. Solar regulator. Depending on the solar re regulators that you have will depend on the amount of amperage you get put back into your battery. Now my recommendation is always to go for an MPPT controller. It just regulates the amount of power going to the battery far better. So it, you can set it up for a, a lithium ion battery, a gel battery, whichever battery you have, you can set it up. And if the lithium ion battery can take in 20 amps, it can take in 15 amps, it can take in 30 amps, whatever the case may be, it will be able to receive that and it will convert that power into what the battery can take. A gel battery might take less amperage. It might not want to accept 30 amps, right? PWM will choke it and will only send X amount of amperage going through to your battery. So whether the battery can receive 30 amp, it might only receive 10 or 12 or five, depending on what kind of solar setup you have. So stick to MPPT controllers, stick to a good battery management system, and you'll be rock and roll, especially 500 watts, 90 amp hour, one fridge, one inverter. You're good, mate. Enjoy your five days. Catch you later. And now it's time for SpeedX tip of the week. So this week's tip is with regards to wet wood. Yeah, we've had rain, so guaranteed we're going to get wet wood. If you're not lucky enough to be able to be close to a store like SpeedX where you can get guaranteed dry wood in the store and you're out there on the road busy touring, you're going to be purchasing wood from the small local stores, which means you're not guaranteed to get dry wood. How do you like that? You can go through a whole can of those or a bottle of that liquid um, fire starters and you will never get that wood going. What I use, one of these little gas torches, little 
flamethrower basically. Cheap as chips, small, stores nice and easily in the vehicle and it detaches from the can. So, in fact, four cans, 18 dirhams, don't need that much but keep it storage. But basically, one of these cans pretty much lasts me about a week starting a fire every night. Detach it so it's nice and safe. It's far safer than that liquid fire starter. And I really enjoyed it. It just gives you that pleasure when you start off the torch and you're burning the wood and off it goes. So, hope you enjoyed the tip. Catch you next week. If it's dusty, drive it.